morning, Lionhearts. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said well. We're departing from Houston and heading out to make our first stop of the day in Beaumont, Texas. And we're hoping to end our day today. Days with Jordan the Lion, Scott Michaels from Dearly Departed Online, and the Joster begins now. In the distance, I see a sign for exit now for Bucky's. Let's do it. This is the Baytown Bucky's. Speak of the devil, there's Bucky with face mask. Very fashionable face mask. I'm gonna grab a sandwich and a drink. You always have to check out the seasonal Bucky's merch. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Oh, check out these. Every town gets their own shirt, so these are the Baytown shirts. And they even have swimsuits. This is the Don't Mess With Texas one. <laughs> wow, look at all the beachwear. Tons and tons of Bucky's beachwear. No shortage of merchandising. Wow, look at that, that is huge. More swimsuits. Now let's grab some food. I like this section because you can just grab whatever sandwich you want and go. Sliced turkey, sliced turkey with pickles, apple pie, sliced sausage, uh, sausage and pickles. I think I want the Bucky's Club melt. And they're making the nuts right there. All right, let's head out of here. There's something in Beaumont that I have to see today. Actually, someone. We'll catch you later, Bucky's. Oh my gosh, his face is on there. I love these, I might have to get one. This road sign up here says to take this exit towards Port Arthur, which we're not gonna do this time, maybe another trip, but many of you may know Janis Joplin was from Port Arthur. Childhood home, high school, all that. All right, we have made it to another Forest Lawn Memorial Park. So we're here to see the final resting place of J.P. Richardson, Giles Richardson, the Big Bopper. Now originally he was buried in the flat section. As you see all these headstones are flattened to the ground. He was originally buried in this section. However, he's since been moved. All right, we found the tranquility section. So here we are. They danced. That's actually not even what we're looking for. Many of you may know one of my earliest favorite influences for music. One of the reasons I started playing guitar was when I saw La Bamba and that was the story of Richie Valens but also the story of that infamous 1959 plane crash they always call the day the music died. You can see here there is a historical placard right here letting us know that this is where the big bopper is buried. I'll read it to you in a second, but right here, you can see here is his grave, his new grave. Originally, he was buried in a different section, the uh, Lily Pool Gardens, and the reason they moved him was because the city wanted to put that plaque up that you just saw. In order to do that, they had to do it in a flat section of the cemetery or he was buried in a flat section of the cemetery they had to move him to where you can see their upright headstone so there he is we've now visited buddy holly richie valens and the big bopper now the big bopper was known for chantilly lace with a pretty face and a ponytail a hanging down he was also known for writing the purple people eater 
and George Jones hit White Lightning. Now what happened was they were all performing on that winter dance party tour and he got sick and Buddy Holly had chartered a plane to take his band members to the next city so they could get some rest and JP was feeling ill and asked if he could have Waylon Jennings seat on the plane and Waylon said well if Buddy don't mind I don't mind so JP got the seat on the plane Richie flipped Tommy Allsup for the other seat on the plane they departed near Clear Lake and eventually crashed to their death now when they exhumed his body to move him his son uh, requested an autopsy because you know like I said since they were gonna move him over here and put that plaque up they you know they had to move the, the casket and exhume him so his son had never seen him his son was actually born three months after his father died at the age of 28 so his son is actually a big bopper performer he travels around the country portraying his father in a show with another performer that portrays Richie Valens and Buddy Holly and so his son wanted to see his dad and meet his dad and find out he had two questions he wanted to know if his dad had survived the plane crash and was going for help and if his father had been shot on the plane apparently after the snow melted and the farmer that owned the land was getting ready to farm his land he found a pistol and it was Buddy Holly's pistol and they always wondered if maybe the pistol accidentally went off and that's what caused the plane to crash so the man who did the autopsy decided he said I just couldn't you know open up this guy in front of his son so he decided to do a he did like an x-ray autopsy and he said from head to toe he had 200 plus fractures on his body and that uh, there's no way he would have survived the crash there was no gunshot wounds or anything there's no way he could have went for help he definitely would have died on impact but the coroner or the man who did the autopsy said of all of the ones that I've done in my life this was definitely the most preserved I had ever seen he said he looked I mean you could definitely tell that his son and he were related just by looking at them together like that but the uh, they said the only real wear was a little bit of leakage had went into the vault that his casket was in of water and there was some limestone stains but other than that I mean the the hair and everything was perfectly the way it was he was in a black suit with a striped tie no shoes there he is final resting place of the big bopper now I went to the Roadside America Museum here in Texas uh, about a year and a half ago and they have the casket he was buried in once he was dug up and everything the company that built the casket um, his original casket offered a new one and so his son tried to sell the old casket on eBay hoping to get money for a tribute show to, for his father but apparently eBay pulled the auction and it was in a Texas Music Hall of Fame for a while and then that closed down now it's at the Roadside America Museum so this is the marker that they put up this is the reason they moved him so they could put this up and it says Giles Perry Richardson was born October 24th, 1930, to Giles and Elsie Bernice Stalsbury Richardson and Sabine Pass. The family moved to Beaumont when he was six. As a teenager, Richardson began writing songs with country and Western influences following graduation from Beaumont High School in 1947. He attended Lamar College, which is also here, where he sang in the choir and played in the band. He developed his Big Bopper character and his musical style shifted towards rockabilly, combining country and western with rock and roll. He served two years in the army but returned to radio work in Beaumont, and as a DJ in 1957, Richardson raised money for charities by spinning records continuously for more than 122 hours. That's pretty cool. Around the same time, Mercury Records executive Shelby Singleton signed him to a contract and the Big Bopper went on tour along the East Coast. His recording, Chantilly Lace, was on the top of the charts for six weeks in 1958 and earned him a gold record after being listed among the top 100 for 25 weeks. At the age of 28, married with two children, rock and roll star J.P. Richardson joined a group of young musicians on another national tour. Tragically, on February 3rd, 1959, their plane crashed in Iowa, killing him, fellow artist Buddy Holly, and Richie Valens. 
Richardson's body was returned here for burial. In addition to the 21 songs he recorded as the Big Bopper, he wrote many more including Running Bear and White Lightning, made popular by other singers. J.P. Richardson Jr. is remembered for his musical talent as well as his larger than life persona as the Big Bopper. Now what I was told was on his other headstone, or maybe he had a different headstone, it said goodbye baby. I don't see that on here though. Got his microphone there. And there you can see, it says wife, it says Titi Noni. It's nice to feel like I've paid my respects to all three. I haven't paid my respects to Roger Peterson. He's the only one out of the four members killed in the crash, but I always wondered for many years what happened to that crash plane, and someone recently commented on my channel that the, uh, the farmhouse that they flew over um, that heard the crash and everything, apparently they supposedly have the plane. That's what I was told. Rest in peace, Big Bopper. Well, my friends, it's been a long day. We're gonna call it a day. We have a big adventure tomorrow, especially considering we're traveling with Scott. You'll not wanna miss what we're seeing tomorrow. Thank you to my newest Patreon, Lucy. Thank you to Ja for being such a good sport for this trip. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great night and goodbye.